let's start with the tarragon. We're sitting in the tarragon. We're sitting in the space. Uh, and the, your first, what was your first uh, experience of this space? Of this place? Yeah, this room. Well, I have to I really have to go back in uh, in time and talk about how I, I came to come to the tarragon with a script. Is that what you want to talk about? Yeah, absolutely. Well, in, in the summer of 1971, I, I was in Prince Edward Island, and I wrote the first draft of a play called The Keepers of the House. I think it's a quote from Ecclesiastes. The title, that's where the title came from. That's what Leaving Home was originally called. And I um, came back to Toronto with that script. It was a one-act, 60-minute uh, play. Uh, stage play, and uh, I was standing in my sister-in-law's kitchen one day, and she said to me, you know, there's a new theater opened up, up, up by the railroad tracks, up at How Howland and Bridgman. You should go there. And I said, what for? She says, well, there, uh, there's a play there that you should see. And I said, really? She said, yeah, it's about people with cerebral palsy. I said, you know what? I don't think I want to see that. I don't, I, don't, I don't think so. She said, oh, you, know, you should go because it got terrific reviews. And uh, I went up to the Tarragon Theater. Um, on a Sunday, pay what you can matinee, drop 25 cents into the poor, into the poor box, into the <laughs> pay what you can box. That's all I had in my pocket. And I. Uh, sat there with all these people and watched David Freeman's play called Creeps, set in a sheltered workshop. And the bloody thing devastated me. And I, all, all during the production I kept thinking, who directed this? Because whoever directed this, I want this person to direct my play if I can ever find a director for it. And when it was over, I waited for everybody to leave the theater, and I walked into the office, and there was a, a woman there. Apparently, now, Bill told me it was Jane Glasgow. I always thought it was some young woman, I'm just a, a worker in the theater. Not, not. But Bill said, no, it was Jane. And she was sitting with her feet up on the desk reading a book. And I said, who, who directed that play? She said, uh, Bill Glasgow. And I said, um, is he here? She says, no, he's not. He's at home. I said, can I have his number? <laughs> she wrote it down on a piece of paper and gave it to me. And I, uh, I said, can I use your phone? She said, yeah, OK. So I phoned, ring, 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 hello. Um, Bill Glasgow? He said, yes. I said, um, Mr. Glasgow, you don't know me. My name is David French, and I've written a play. Oh. I said, yeah, would you read it? He said, um, yeah, okay, yeah, I would. I said, you would? He said, yeah, I would. I said, well, if you like it, would you do it this year? You imagine that. He said, well, as a matter of fact, he said, we don't have a play for the last slot in May. He said, because of the first play was Creeps, the first season was First play was Creeps, and it was a big hit. But the four plays following that all flopped, and Bill was going to close the theater. So he said, um, we don't have a, a, a play for the last slot. If I like your play, of course I'd do it. So I dropped the play off. I had, still hadn't met Bill. I dropped the play off at, at the theater. And a couple of days later, he, he called me and said, come on in. I like, I like your play. Come in and talk to me. So I went up to the th theater thinking, oh boy, oh boy, this could be my big break, you know? This could be my big break. The guy's going to read my play. So I get up there, and I wait outside the theater for this guy, and he comes loping up the street towards me. A six foot four guy with a tweed jacket with el uh, leather elbow patches, a beard. And he said, come on, let's go in the green room. We'll talk in there. And Bill and I, after this experience, never went in the green room again, ever. 
Uh, so we went into the green room, and he sat there with my script in his lap, facing us like he, you and I, facing me the way you are right now, except closer, knee almost touching my knees. And he said to me, you know, I like this play, but I don't think you've realized the full potential in it. I grabbed that script out of his lap, and I leaped to my feet, and I called him every profanity I knew, and I knew a lot of them. <laughs> and um, now, Bill, Bill said that the reason he chased me was because Jane told him to go after me. I didn't know this. I didn't know this until shortly before Bill died. And um, he, he chased me out of the theater, he grabbed me in front of me, he put his great big hands on my shoulders. And he stopped me and he said, look at, look at, come on back, come on, cool, 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 cool down, for God's sakes. He said, come on back, let's talk. He said, I'm your, your friend, not your enemy. So that was the last fight Bill and I ever had, except for we, we used to fight over things in the play, really, the little things, but it was never serious. But we never, we ever went in that green room together. <laughs> um, so that was how Bill and I met, and that's how we ended up at the Tarragon. I had not heard that story. That's a story. I could go into much more detail, but that's, that's basically the story. And what was it that made you snap and grab the script from I was the world's most insecure guy. I mean, I, see, I spent years trying to write for the CBC, and, and um, th there was one woman down there at the CBC who was a story editor, and I would take a script into her, sometimes in an hour and a half script. And she'd praise it to the skies, and by the time I left the office, I'd be a mess of insecurity because she'd start to tick, tick, cut, cut away at it and criticize me in all kinds of different ways. And I thought, oh, this guy, he's like her. Right. And I freaked out. I think that's what it was, just my own insecurity. So did Bill and you then work on the text, or did it stay as well, it was? Well, Bill and I worked on the text from, from the... That was, that was in October. Now, we didn't open until May, something rather, the end of May. So we, um, we worked on the script um, till, till then, yeah. Basically, Bill, Bill didn't know how to, tell, how, how, to, how to fix a script, but he knew that he, he, could, he could say, this section here is there's something not quite right about it, David. Go home and think about it. It's not working. That kind of criticism, which is what I like. Right. I don't want somebody telling me too, too specifically what's wrong with something. Right. Because sometimes they don't know what they're talking about. Even, even the people who su supposedly do know what they're talking about often don't. And um, so we worked. It, so it, it was called The Keepers of the House. Bill hated the title, I hated the title, and neither one of us could come up with a good one. So um, one day I'm, I'm in my apartment and the phone rings and it's Bill. He says, he says, oh, I, he says, I've got the title. I said, you do? He says, yeah, I was driving along the garden there and I almost went off the road, God damn it. He said, the, 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 the title came to me and I almost drove off the road. I said, okay, Bill, what is it? He said, are you sitting down? I said, no, I'm standing up. He said, sit down. I said, no, I'm standing up. He said, okay, leaving home. I said, leaving home? He said, yeah, leaving home. You like it? I said, no, I don't. He said, you don't like the title? I said, no, I don't. He said, what don't you like about it? I said, I don't, I don't know, Bill. I don't like the title. He said, are you sure? I said, yeah. He said, okay. And he hung up. And as soon as he put the phone down, I thought to myself, wow, what a wonderful title. What a wonderful title. But I couldn't find him. It took me about two hours to locate him again to tell him that I liked the title. So that, that, that's how we ended up with Leaving Home. Bill thought of it. However, several months later, when I was going through my notes for that play, one of the titles I had was Leaving Home. And I'd forgotten all about it. Wow. I'd completely forgotten it, that I ever called it that. And how much of that original text changed to the production? Oh, it's, a lot of it changed. For example, one, one, of the, one of the really good criticisms Bill gave me, he said, um, he said, look, David, he said, Minnie and Harold 
are only in the play for 10 pages. That's all they were, 10, 10 minutes. He said, they're, they're two wonderful characters. You've got to try, to try to keep them in the play longer than that. He didn't know how to do it, right. but he wanted me to try. So I kept them in for 60 pages. That's, that's yeah. how long they finally ended up being in the play, 60 more minutes. Things like that. And he said, the humor keeps bubbling out of this play. Keep, keep going for it. Right. Because up until then, I wasn't very funny. Well, I, I used to cut the humor out of my plays. Why? I don't know. I didn't think it was serious if you had humor in it. How, how old were you then? I was 32. You had written earlier plays. I, I'd written plays for television for 10 years. Right. I, I saw my first television play back in 1963 to the CBC in Montreal. And for 10 years, I, I sold plays to the CBC in Montreal and Toronto. What, they were always, Bob, I didn't really write for television, except I wrote for Basil Dazzle, the kids' show. But I, um, I didn't really write for television. I, I wrote one act stage plays, 30 minutes long, one set, two or three characters that I sold to television. Right. I, my apprenticeship in the theater was really in television. Your interest really was theater, it wasn't television. Yeah, no, but there was no place to put on those plays. Right. So I used to sell them to the CBC. Right. And once it got going with Bill and the Tarragon, did you write any more for television? Well, that, that, within, a, within two weeks there was something on television that I had written, but I had sold it before Leaving Home opened. After that, no, not really, no. You're a theater I've, animal. I've, I've made my living from the theater, yeah, since 1972. And are you happy with that, or do you yeah, look at a TV happy. career or a film I don't career want to and go, go near television? Why? Well, I never learned anything. Um, I mean, I know that sounds odd, but I used to write these plays, and um, they used to put them in front of a television camera, just the way I wrote them. Nobody ever asked me to change anything, right. or talk about it, or anything else. Right. So, and I was longing to uh, somebody to give me some kind of criticism. So at the end of the process with Bill taking Leaving Home, from the initial script to what it opened with, did, how did the young 32-year-old David French uh, see the journey, of the, the t changes in the script? And you guys were both learning together. Yeah. Right. Exactly. You were learning text and script and structure, and Bill was learning and how do you deal with the new see, writers. See, Bob, I already taught myself. Uh, I have to go back again in time. Um, after I saw my first play to television, it was a play called, uh, one act play called Beckons the Dark River, about these two kids who commit suicide. <laughs> and they're crossing the river Styx. And they decide at the end of the play to go back towards life. And that, and that uh, I sold when I was 23 years old. I wrote it in 18 hours, sitting on a, uh, on a floor with a pencil and a pad of paper. And uh, I typed it up and sent it to CBC in Montreal. That in those days, at 11.30 on Sunday night, there was a show in Montreal called Shoestring Theatre. And they used to do plays. So I sold them a, a number of plays, but that was the first one. And those were tape dramas? Yeah, they're probably still around. Was it live to tape, or was it live? Not live on tape. It, well, well was it, it wasn't live to broadcast? No. They taped it, edited it, yeah. and then played it, right? And we were, those plays have never had a further life. No, Did I've, you never, ever, I've never seen them since. Were the Mercers in those plays? No, no, they weren't, and not at all. I was still struggling to, to learn how to write a play. However, I know what I'm, I, I lost my train of thought, Bob. Now, what, I, what I'm trying to say now is that after I saw that first play, I realized I didn't know what the hell I had done. I wrote it in 18 hours, sitting on the floor with a pad, right. pad and a pencil. It was just a very intuitive act. Now I, I decided, if I'm going to write plays, I want to know what I'm doing. I, I, I want to know the craft. So I sat down and started studying plays from the Greeks right up to the present time. It took me nine years. I spent nine years learning or teaching myself the craft of writing a play, I don't, and I still haven't learned it. I'm still struggling with it. It's a very complex and 
intricate art.